the time gandhian movement civil disobedience stands out as as a great example of the true display of the power of satyagraha that is the important friends of course uh, causes we had already seen in the sense that 1929 uh, lahore session had authorized uh, gandhi ji to uh, take up the next round of mass movement and uh, he he in jan he wrote a letter to viceroy viceroy was even by that time with uh, some eleven demands including you know the the abolition of salt tax which is of course major uh, demand then uh, the decrease in uh, reduction in uh, agricultural uh, taxes then uh, you know uh, imposition of import tariff on uh, cotton uh, so and of course his uh, dear to heart prohibition and all that so basically if you see gandhi ji was trying to pick up a, a point for struggle okay uh, he just wanted to fight the fight with the government launch the movement to launch the movement we need some you know cause right okay okay so according to the government right so that is how gandhi ji was uh, trying to do and friends why salt why salt uh, salt satyagraha salt has been taken as an item why gandhi ji demanded abolition of salt satyagraha and also uh, started a march to pick up salt friends there are two points here basically when we say civil disobedience it is actually related to a kind of uh, you know uh, the the breaking of uh, laws we do, we disobey we disobey uh, the all civil laws now paying tax is a civil law right so not paying tax and making salt without license is a disobedience right so like that in fact uh, the civil disobedience is uh, designed in such a way that it is the next level of uh, non cooperation friends if you remember in the previous class we did talk about uh, the non cooperation going to the no tax campaigns by the end of uh, 1921 but of course because of the chauri chaura incident it was called off okay so that's one important point and uh, salt gandhi ji's uh, intelligence should be understood uh, because he has taken the item of salt because you know salt concerns everybody the rich and poor equally require salt for example if you say we want uh, some you know prohibition of for tax removal of tax on foreign liquor how many people are impacted only rich people are impacted but salt even a poor man will also need salt so if government is imposing a uh, license fee on salt salt tax then obviously it is impacting the poor lives also and uh, see the, the, the civil disobedience and the salt satyagraha and the dandi march has two important angles one gandhi ji wanted to fight with the british government while simultaneously trying to expand the scope of indian nation movement while trying to expand the social base of indian nation movement so he saw salt as that is appealing to the poor masses in india so that's why he has very intelligently taken up the salt and he also wrote in the letter that uh, on march 11th i will take up a handful of followers that is of course 72 people they started the early hours of next day okay and reach dandi and break the salt a uh, loss you know by picking up the salt so this is how gandhi ji had uh, informed viceroy in advance in a letter and uh, he also mentioned that it is the right of the people to refuse to cooperate with the government to refuse to obey the government if the if the government is not ruling properly that is also a very very important uh, point gandhi ji had made now see it's a very interesting uh, situation when gandhi ji wrote a letter that i am going to take up that day march in almost two months uh, nearly two months in advance he wrote a letter to irwin now irwin who was the viceroy was in a fix see if they respond to gandhi ji's letter and arrest him then national leader say see british government is uh, afraid of uh, gandhi ji and uh, national movement so even before anything could be launched they arrested and if he don't arrest they will start the movement so it's like between you know between the devil and the deep sea he did not know what to do finally he preferred to not to respond and ignore gandhi ji's letter in the meanwhile gandhi ji was making uh, preparations see one one important aspect is even the british government did not expect that there will be a great round of support 
from the people and the participation from the people. So they thought, let's wait and see what happens. If really people will respond to this, Gandhi's this call or not. So that is how the uh, government was uh, playing it. And of course, it was ignored. Gandhi C made very careful preparations for the Dandi March. And friends, uh, before uh, starting of the march, large number of people uh, started uh, visiting Sabarmati Ashram, you know, to pay their uh, support, to express their solidarity and support with uh, Gandhi. So uh, this is a very, very important uh, scenario because for the first and last time in the entire national movement, Gandhi Ji had explained the power of uh, non-violence. He said, why we should uh, take up the non-violence uh, struggle? So he was telling people on March 10th, in fact, hundreds of people, March 10th, 1930, just uh, uh, shortly before, uh, a couple of days before he was starting his march, large number of people uh, came to see Gandhi Ji, you know, and Gandhi Ji was addressing them he made a very, very important speech by saying, see, my dear people, you just see, I have already written to the government that I am going to launch the march. Okay. First of all, they have not arrested me. Secondly, why the government did not stop you uh, coming to see me? You know, because government knows that, you know, day after tomorrow I am going to march and you are coming now in large numbers, hundreds, thousands, you are coming. Why government did not stop you know, government did not stop because they believed that we are non-violent. If all of you are wearing khadi or, uh, you know, khadar, then you just chant hey Ram or Allah or whatever, you know, and do some bhajans and silently come or even a silent protest, wear khadi and walk unarmed, the government is not worried. He said, see, there are uh, even, even if you are carrying sticks, the government or police would have stopped you because you are non-violent. The government see knows no problem immediately. So friends, non-violence is a very, very important step in Indian national movement to take it forward. Imagine if, if everything is uh, stopped, if all people are prevented from going to Shabarmat Ashram, if Gandhi was, uh, you know, made to be in house arrest, how he will launch the march? So national movement is like a tightrope walk. On one hand, we have to struggle with the British. On the other hand, we should be able to attract more and more and more and more and people to come to the fold of national movement so that the social base of national movement will be more and more wider. And the more number of people participate in the national movement, it is how we threaten the British and finally threaten. Finally, British were forced to live, right? So that's why, friends, civil disobedience movement is a very, very interesting movement where Gandhiji explained all this. Anyway, he started his famous march, as told, to reach Dandi on April 6, 1930, to break the salt laws. Friends, this march is a wonderful scenario. You know, see, it is uh, 240 miles from Shabarmati Ashram uh, to Dandi coast. It was 240 miles, very long. Imagine this uh, old man we, with, we clad in a langot and ha carrying a staff or a, you know a stick in his hand walking that was a great scene you know in fact the villages 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 they have they were electrified by gandhi's presence and walk you know there are occasions there were occasions when people were paving floors and uh, leaves dried leaves on the road so that the old man legs will not get hurt you know, he cannot walk. He was an old man. Imagine that kind of determinism. We are unable to go for a morning walk nowadays. How many people are doing exercise? Tell me. Physical exercise. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, we are unable to do exercise. Two, three hours, we are unable to study with the discipline. Imagine the commitment Gandhi had to walk all the way. Okay. So it was a, it, it, it had electrified Indian national movement. It had electrified the participation. It has brought in large number of people into the fold of uh, national movement. So Gandhiji picked it up and it was a huge success. The Dandi March, he started just with 70 followers, but by that time he reached, thousands of people started going behind him. And you know, and when he was passing through villages, people were wearing khadi and uh, on, the, on, the, on the verandas, they were simply doing charkas. And it was a great welcome to Gandhiji and to the spirit of Indian national movement. Okay, now see, Gandhi's picking up salt is the formal beginning of uh, the 
civil disobedience of course we can say march is also beginning but breaking of laws actual breaking of laws is the formal beginning of uh, civil disobedience but friends as pipin chandra rightly writes it was only a catalyst gandhi is picking up salt was only a catalyst but it has triggered off so much response in different places of the country across the british india for example you know uh, in tamil nadu we have rajagopal achari who in march if there is a question on, on in the mains on uh, civil disobedience and its impact you need to catch up the uh, main events this is very very important if you simply write gandhi ji march in march in march in picked up salt you don't get any mark so remember them anyway in the notes i will be giving you i will also mention this but tamil nadu we have sir rajagopal achari who led a march from trichinapalli to vedanarayanan and uh, you know then malabar kelapan k kelapan is the hero of uh, vaikam satyagraha also i should remember you know this can be asked in the prelims also vaikam satyagraha he led a march from kalikat to uh, payanmur uh, to to break uh, the salt laws then even in assam north east you know we have a march from silhet to uh, nohakali on bengal coast uh, to to uh, you know break the salt laws most powerful the most attractive and powerful thing came from gujarat in gujarat we have three important uh, leaders sarojini naidu and uh, uh, imam saheb gandhi ji is associate uh, in south african struggle also and gandhi ji had a son called manilal these are the three people who had uh, led uh, a, a satyagraha called darshan satyagraha this darshan is a place where there is a salt works you know it's on the coast so a salt making company so sarojini naidu imam saheb and manlal uh, led a great satyagraha year and friends it was a great scenario it was a great scene to watch this as i said then american journalist called web miller was a, a, an eye witness to this and he took lot of photographs and wrote it internationally even in america and all other global recognition had come to this darshan satyagraha because of the great display of spirit of uh, non violence you know in fact there were hundreds of volunteers clad in khadi standing in line before the darshan gate of darshan satyagraha and you know of course they will try to go in uh, to break the salt laws and uh, police would lot charge them see people who stood in queues and they, they were waiting in queues to get beaten uh, black and blue by the police they were beaten pulp by the police and the first line will fall uh, onto the ground because of police uh, lot charge then the second line will come and stand they will get beaten they will fall then the third line will come they will get beaten they will fall and women volunteers will remove all the people who are fallen with injuries to take them to side what a great scene just imagine imagine this kind of patriotism can you expect this in these days and the freedom friends i always tell you the freedom did not come with easily for us you know we were totally subjugated by the colonial power so that's why we need to ensure the proper, proper protection of the country's institutions and great traditions we have to be honest we have to be uh, you know uh, follow the rules and all that okay to honor the democracy and all that okay so this was a great event darshan satyagraha was a great event by uh, led by sarojin naidu and others and this uh, this is a classic example of the power of satyagraha not a single hand not a single hand was raised in even in self defense by these poor people when they were beaten thoroughly by the police so we should uh, salute to them then of course even in karnataka we have satyagraha there is a place called uh, kasinatta uh, salt works there is a satyagraha there and in andhra a lot of shibirams were organized andhra was also very powerful center of uh, civil disobedience of course non cooperation as well as uh, civil disobedience then in bihar uh, uh, up bombay punjab and even orissa puri balasore all these places uh, have shown great participation in bihar up uh you know we do have a lot of peasants uh, uh peasant movements you know uh, uh the kisan sabhas kisan sabha movement or peasant movements coming together uh, to team up with the national movement to so join the national movement that was a very very good scenario friends uh, this was how the early response to civil disobedience has happened 
of course the operation has started from may 1930 uh, uh, okay where one by one uh, april the arrest of jawaharlal nehru gandhi ji was arrested in may one by one all important leaders were arrested but the movement was going on at a different different level okay in the across the british india okay so friends uh, by the year end by 1930 december uh, things were changing why there were different political developments simon commission we were talking about simon commission in the previous class right so simon commission had actually uh, suggested that an all party meet should be held to finalize the next round of constitutional reforms further to 1999 see we said the uh, 1919 act uh, was first uh, to be reviewed by muddy man committee in 1925 then it suggested that uh, a, a greater uh, inquiry should be done then simon commission was appointed and on the basis of simon commission's recommendations we had this uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> we had this issue of uh, uh, the the round table uh, conferences where people uh, the British government invited all the people to discuss this and participate. So, first round table conference, uh, the Congress did not participate anyway, all were in jail and uh, there was a uh, great movement outside. So, Viceroy Irwin was under pressure. He was under pressure to ensure that Congress would participate at least in one round table conference. Okay, otherwise, if major uh, party that is Congress is not participating, how can you say that it is actually an all party meet? You know, if all uh, Chota Mota parties, if they are leaders, they are attending, you can't say because uh, you can't say it's an all, all, all party meet because the Congress is the mainstay, right? So he was very keen on having congress participated at least in one round table conference so that you know his record will be good with the british administrators otherwise people will start criticizing him that irwin could not even uh, make congress to come so irwin was ready for talks with uh, gandhi ji to to ensure that the congress is actually uh, ready to participate in the second round table conference okay if that is the case, why Gandhiji and Congress should accept for talks? You know, why they should be ready for talks? Friends, by December, Gandhiji was already in jail anyway. So by December, Gandhiji was able to see visible signs of uh, cracks in the civil disobedience movement. You know, the movement was gradually coming down. I also told in the previous class, Gandhian struggle is based on STS strategy. STS means, you know, the struggle, true struggle. Remember this. This is the logic of our national movement under Gandhi. Okay. So, people, poor people in India would not be able to sustain participation and oppression for long. See, they might work for two, they might participate for one month, two months, three months. But after that, they will have to take care of their families. They will have to earn their daily bread. So, you can't ask a daily, daily wage laborer or even a farmer or a rickshaw puller to think about patriotism and now ignore his family without food. So poor people have a limitation. This limitation was very well understood by Gandhiji. So Gandhiji was also looking for a uh, way out, decent way out so that some talks can happen and he can give a break to the moment. Okay. So this is how Gandhiji was also thinking. And of course, uh, Irwin had his own reasons. Gandhiji had his own reasons. We have people like... Uh, Tez Bhadar Sapru, all these people were trying to moderate between these two and uh, as a result, finally Gandhiji had agreed to have some discussions with Irwin, that is the famous Gandhi Irwin talks that has happened in March. On, on March 1931, these talks resulted in some kind of pact which is called Gandhi Irwin pact. And this Gandhi Irwin pact had, uh, you know, some important points. Both agreed uh, for some important points. First one, Gandhiji, uh, the British, Gandhiji ready to, uh, Congress and Gandhiji agreed to, uh, you know, uh, suspend uh, the national movement. 
or civil disobedience movement and to participate in the second round table conference of course gandhi ji would attend representing congress indian national congress okay then that is the only thing the uh, gandhi ji and indian national congress will do on their part government was also given some demands which they had agreed government should release all the political prisoners who were arrested but not convicted you catch the words carefully gandhi irwin pact agreed uh, to release all political prisoners who were arrested but not convicted we were talking about bhagat singh in the previous class see bhagat singh was already convicted bhagat singh rajguru sukhdev were already convicted for the uh, you know assassination of sanders and they were given death sentence they were waiting for the gallows okay so this uh, bhagat singh and others could not be saved by gandhi ji uh, because of this uh, pact this clause in gandhi irwin pact see there is also lot of criticism on gandhi ji why he was unable to insist that uh, bhagat singh should be saved you know they should their life should be saved uh, friends the occasion was such that that lord irwin viceroy irwin was ready to do anything for uh, gandhi ji except freedom okay because he was hell bent on making congress attending the second round table conference otherwise 1935 act cannot be for, uh, completed okay this is the round table conferences were nothing but the preparations for 1935 act the discussions okay so uh, if at all gandhi ji had asked government to commute the death sentence given to bhagat singh rajguru sukhdev to a life sentence by the time we got freedom all these people great patriots would have been alive so there was a lot of uh, criticism okay but friends uh, we should uh, we should agree that gandhi ji had his own uh, has he has uh, got his own adamant uh, attitude okay he was fundamentally thinking that the law should be continued you know why these people uh, the revolutionaries took to violence why sanders should be killed he he is a he's a he's an idiot sanders is an idiot there is no doubt about it but it doesn't mean that we'll take uh, law into our hands and uh, kill sanders which is murder is a murder right so that is how gandhi ji was somewhat uh, not too keen on uh, defending uh, bhagat singh rajguru and sukhdev but this is one of the class and of course the criticism on gandhi irwin pact the other one the first uh, class from the government side in the gandhi irwin pact is release of all political prisoners who are not already convicted who are not already sentenced the if they are under trial they will release second one the government will also return all the properties of the people who participated in the movements you know they confiscated properties if it was not uh, sold to third party if it is not auctioned off already and sold to third party then the next important thing is civil and political liberties will also be restored and oppression will be stopped so precisely these are the main points in the gandhi irwin pact and friends on march 5th uh, 1931 uh, all these things were happening so gradually uh, following this the civil disobedience movement was suspended okay after the gandhi irwin pact but friends uh, it had again created lot of uh, uh, criticism on gandhi ji he had a history non cooperation movement when it was in peak he called off you know which was criticized by others again when civil disobedience movement was that it speak in 1931 it was doing well according to many national leaders why gandhi ji should go for a pact or truce with government he could have continued okay that was the standard criticism on uh, gandhi ji but friends as i mentioned to you gandhi ji's argument is always the same that the poor masses in india did not have the ability to continue struggle beyond a point beyond few months five months six months one year but after that they need a break okay so this was uh, gandhi ji's argument and as usually uh, he uh, did not bother for criticism he went to the second uh, round table conference in london and uh, and of course okay <clears throat>
that is the point friends so uh, gandhi ji attended the second round table conference okay <clears throat> Uh, so uh, this is the point and uh, round table conference obviously uh, failed because gandhi ji government did not have any real intention to you know listen to gandhi ji and uh, you know the issue of uh, communal representations were there uh, all these issues uh, gandhi ji was uh, not to the liking so he walked out of the meeting and uh, of course round table conference continued he walked out of the meeting boycotted and then uh, came back to india Uh, in the 1932 jan and immediately was arrested and put to arawana jail okay uh, from then uh, again he had uh, formally said we are launching the uh, civil disobedience movement because as per uh, as per uh, the uh, the issue of uh, the movement gandhi in pact had only suspended the movement you know it was not withdrawn so formally civil disobedience movement was uh, relaunched in 1932 and it was uh, on paper it was there till 1934 but of course uh, <coughs> but of course we we can't say that it was a real phase for the movement nobody people lost interest by the time and uh, gandhi ji was also in jail national leaders were in jail so uh, the movement was almost dead the main phase that's why i have mentioned on the board the main phase of uh, civil disobedience movement was uh, exactly almost for one year from march uh, 1932 to irwin pact again march 1931 after that in the second round of uh, civil disobedience is just in the name sake people did not bother and uh, we can't call it as a real movement though yes formally it was there up to 1934 when congress with the right formal okay so this is how you need to see the civil disobedience movement friends so uh, it is definitely a great leap forward as far as the national sentiments are concerned as far as spread of nationalism is concerned as far as expansion of the social reach of uh, social base of the national movement is concerned uh, and uh, the the arrests or the confiscation of the properties uh, you know it was uh, phenomenal the spread is almost all over uh, british india so that's why this represented a very very significant uh, phase in uh, indian national movement and the gandhian leadership okay uh, if uh, if if we have to cite any limitation the only limitation is of course the disappointing participation in the in the in terms of the number of muslims you know of course it not that entire muslims did not participate but compared to non cooperation movement we have uh, a lower participation of muslims it is because of the divisive politics of the muslim league and the widening gulf between the congress and muslim league as an organization level at the ideological level okay so uh, but there are always uh, nationalist muslims who really sacrificed uh, uh, you know uh, their life and blood for the country and independence but we are talking only in terms of numbers especially the muslim league participation when we say muslims we are not talking of all the muslims in national movement muslim league remember muslim league never represented indian muslims fully it was a divisive organization but there are scores of uh, uh, imam sahab we are talking about you know there are scores of uh, muslim leaders great respected muslim leaders who participated in the national movement and uh, did their uh, contribution but as far as muslim league and their supporters they did not participate in uh, civil disobedience movement so this is how uh, you need to see so friends uh, you just have to remember uh, the uh, the points here the questions could be because it is short answer questions the questions could be on analyze the significance of civil disobedience movement which is general and the spread you have to remember and how do you justify gandhi irwin pact you know uh, you know analyze the classes what like to gandhi irwin pact and uh, do you think what is the criticism on uh, gandhi irwin pact like that what is gandhi ji's position like that there may be some analytical questions on this but uh, you just have to read all this as we have discussed okay so this is about uh, civil disobedience movement and friends we will continue the uh, next part